Hotel World. This your brother, Matthew Daniels, a.k.a. M. Poole, a.k.a. The Chosen Few, a.k.a. The Real Bookworm. I'm not a bookworm. I'm the real bookworm. Make sure you get it right. And y'all saw the title of this one. Today, we are going to be dealing with the concept of someone has to die. Someone has to die. Now, I've been making a lot of videos. Right. Because what I'm trying to do is assist people in writing their book. OK, a lot of people have great ideas. In their head. And a lot of people have a desire to write, but they hit certain stumbling blocks. That hinder them and stop them from achieving their goals, okay? And so as an author who has two published novels right now, Suicide Note and Thicker Than Water, that's available for purchase, and many more books already written, and many more books in the works right now, I want to use what I know to help you. Now, am I the best author in the world? Pro probably not, because it's a matter of opinion. OK, it's a matter of a, it's a matter of opinion. You you can't you. It's hard to be the best at something like that because it's a it's a matter of opinion. Some some people can have a book that sold a million copies like uh, J.K. Rowling, millions and millions and millions of copies of Harry Potter. But you have some people that may read Harry Potter and say, man, this is a trash. This is a trash book. Right. It, she's not the best author in the world, although she has millions and millions and millions of book sales. So it's a matter of opinion, right? Now, am I the best author in the world? In my opinion, of course. Of course, I'm going to put myself on that level, right? But I don't expect you to. You don't have to, right? Have I, am, have I written more books than any other author on the face of the planet? No. Am I the only individual that offers advice and tips and tools and coaching and training on how to write a book? No. No, you can go to YouTube, type in how to write a book and countless videos will come up. You can go to Google, punch in how to write a book and countless resource material will come up. OK, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to add my expertise into the pot because some people may understand how I explain it better than how they would understand somebody else explain it. And we'll have just that many more authors in the world. I just want more authors in the world. I want more pieces of literature in the world. I'm the real bookworm. I love books, right? And so what I'm gonna be talking about in this one is someone has to die. OK, so when you're writing your book, someone has to die. Now, I'm going to tell you why, why I say that. OK, I'm going to tell you why I say that. The main reason why I say that is because when you're writing your book, OK, you want to elicit emotion out of the reader. You 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 want your readers on an emotional roller coaster. Individuals like to be emotionally drawn into the book and they like to be emotionally attached to the readers. Now, one of the best ways to elicit emotion out of your readers is by killing off characters. Okay? And not just any character, like like not just a random character. You know, you just say that your character walked into the walked into the corner store and killed the clerk, you know, and the reader has no background information on the clerk. They're not going to be emotionally invested into the clerk. So the 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 emotional attachment of the clerk being killed isn't really going to going to be there. And you know that to be a fact. Because um, an individual can hear about someone halfway across the world dying. And they may feel like, you know what, that's 
that's sad, you know, that that's sad. Some someone died, you know, but they won't be emotionally invested in it. But then if it's somebody that they know or somebody in an area close to where they are at and it's closer to home and they're more em emotionally invested into that individual who died, then you're going to get a more deeper emotional reaction to it. Right. The more emotionally attached the individual is to a person, the more emotion that you're going to elicit out of that individual when that character dies or when that person dies, if it's real life. That's why if someone's uh, mother, father, grandfather, brother, child, sister, something like that passes away, it's going to affect them emotionally more than if someone that they don't even know their name dies halfway across the world. It's just how it works. So what you want to do in your book, you want to capitalize off of that understanding, right? The more emotionally invested an individual is to a person, the bigger the emotional reaction you will get out of that person's death. So you want to make your reader emotionally invested into the individual that you are going to kill. Okay. It may not be the main character. You know, it can't really be the main, main character because the main character is who the book is about. And if you kill them halfway through the book, what is the rest of the book going to be about? You have to introduce another main character, but it can be someone close to the main character, right? Someone that you have already invested a sufficient amount of time developing that person's character, telling them about that person's background, right? Telling them about that person's past telling them your reader about that person's fears, ambitions, goals, desires, whether that person has children, tell them about that person's family, right? Make them love that character. Okay. You want to make them love that character. You want to make them feel like they know that character. They know something about them. That character is familiar to them. So when you kill them, right? When you kill them, it's akin to losing someone in real life that you care about. It's why people can read, they'll read a book and cry when a character dies, or they'll watch a movie and they'll cry when a character dies. It is because the writer has caused you to be emotionally attached to that individual. Okay. So in your book, understand that someone is going to have to die. And that individual that is going to have to die has to be somebody significant to the storyline, right? That will cause your book to more readily emotionally draw in the reader. And your book will have a more serious and profound impact on the actual readers and they will talk about your, your 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 book in a in a better light now what i don't want you to do is don't be afraid okay don't be afraid of having the reader hate you listen to me don't be afraid of having the reader hate you now i'm not saying you want them to hate you as an author and throw your book away but i'm saying if you kill off a significant character and your reader gets mad at you for that and they're reading the book and they're like why did the real bookworm kill off matthew in the book oh man i i I don't even want to finish the book. I, I, why did he do that, man? He saw oh, why, why, why did they kill Matthew, man? Matthew, he had, he had three children. You know, Matthew was working his way through school. Matthew was a good guy. Why did he kill off Matthew? Oh man, to hell with Matt, to hell with the real book one. Why did he do this? When they react like that, you know, you've done your job. You know, you've done your job. Don't be afraid. Okay, to have your character hate you. You you may be writing your story and then you may be thinking in your mind, you know what? I have the perfect person that I can kill off. But I don't want to kill this person off because they are a good person. And I don't want to kill off a good person. 
Don't worry about that. It's, 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 it's fiction. It's a work of fiction. You want to elicit that emotion out of your reader. If you're hesitant about killing that person off because of the, the relevance they have to the story, they're not the story. The story is not about them. But because of the relevance that they have to the story, then guess what? That's probably the person that you want to kill. And it's a good idea to draw the death out. Lead your reader to believe that they are going to die and then they are going to survive the, 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 the near death experience. And then they actually die. That's what I mean by the emotional roller coaster. A person loves the character, right? They love the character. They're riding high on they're loving the character. Then, you know, uh, on a base level, it could happen a million in one way, but boom, somebody shoots them. Boom. So when somebody shoots them, they, they fall out and they're like, oh, then the reader's like, oh, they're going to die. And then that emotional roller coaster that they're riding high, they're like, oh, man, no, not this character, not him, no, not, not him, not him, not him. Then they go to the hospital or something like that. They go to the hospital and it's like, oh, the doctors um, appear to be saving his life. And then they're like, oh, man, he's going to pull through. He's going to make it. And they start going back up on that emotional roller coaster. He's going to make it. And then. Oh, all of a sudden the doctors say, oh, there's complications. He he's about to flatline. We're losing him. He, 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 his lung has collapsed. He, he, he has blood in his lungs and he's coughing up blood and he's, he's going into a seizure and all this good stuff. Then the, the reader is going to start going down on that emotional roller coaster again. And now they're like, oh, man, no, I thought he was going to make it. He's going to die. And you don't want to play that game too long because it's hard to explain how, oh, he's going to live, oh, he's going to die, oh, he's going to live, oh, he's going to die, oh, he's going to live, oh, he's going to die. You don't want to do it too much, but you want to do it enough to send that reader on that emotional roller coaster, and then, boom, you flatline the character. And then the reader is left to, oh, cope with the fact that they're gone, right? Just as if they had to cope with the fact that a loved one in real life is gone. Someone has to die. Remember that and implement that into your book. Make them love the character, snatch the character from them, make them think the character is going to survive, and then flatline. Okay? And somebody may be listening to this and they may be thinking like, oh, no, that, don't, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Well, okay, well, if it doesn't sound like a good idea to you, don't take it. Now, if you want more detail on how to write that out based on the story that you are writing again go to my website www.therealbookworm.com send me a message and if i specifically know you know what you're writing about some background on the characters i can give you some real good ideas on how to play that scene out in your in your book because there's a thousand and one ways to die you know, you can be shot, you can be stabbed, you can have a heart attack, you can have cancer, you can get a deadly disease, you can get the coronavirus, you know, you can catch Ebola, right? You can, you know, anything, you can be stung by a bee and have a allergy or the person can already be allergic, uh, allergic to peanuts and then somebody can slip peanuts on them or they can ingest poison, they can get in the car wreck, their, their plane can go down. You know, there's, there's a million and one ways to play it out. You, you can do this several times in the book in one book and you can do this in several books and never repeat the scene you know never repeat the scene so there's a million and one different ways to play this out and if if your creative juices aren't flowing and you can't figure out a way to successfully um um write this into your story go to www.therealbookworm.com send me a message let me know what you're struggling with and i can give you some ideas that are guaranteed to work, right? That are guaranteed to work. Now, you may want more than one person to die. Now, depending on the storyline, you know, depending on the storyline, you, 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 you may not want to kill off a lot of people, right? But you always want to give yourself the, the ability to kill off people. So when you introduce your characters, don't, don't be stingy. Right. Don't 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 be stingy. If, if, if your book is about Matthew Daniels. Let's say the real bookworm is writing a book about Matthew Daniels. Right. Matthew Daniels cannot be the only character that I fully develop and, and, and make the reader feel like they know. OK, there has to be people in the 
circumference around Matthew Daniels that he encounters and those individuals have to be developed as well. And so then you can choose which one you want to kill off. Okay. Now think about something. You watch a horror movie, right? Let's say you watch a horror movie and basically it's going to be about a haunted house and a ghost or a demon poacher guy, something like that is going to be killing people because in a horror film people die right i want you to think about something and understand that they're utilizing these tactics that i'm telling you about it's always going to start off with a group it's not going to start off with just one individual it is you, you see a horror movie and it's four or five teenagers going on vacation right and it's going to be those four or five teenagers going on vacation because whoever is writing that knows that along the way someone has to die so now they have four or five people to die and theoretically they can kill three or four of them and still have one left that can come out triumphant as the protagonist okay the hero that can actually survive the assault so they give you these multiple characters just so they can kill someone off you know, you think of a movie like Jeepers Creepers. You know what I mean? You think of a movie like Jeepers Creepers and Jeeper Creepers or have it, have you said? And um you have a bus full of uh, of kids, athletes, a bus full of uh, uh, high school athletes or something like that going off to do something then a bus breaks down. And now you have a bus full of individuals that you can kill off. And you'll notice as the story progresses, they'll be, they, they, they may build up the quarterback and build up the running back. And then you have the girlfriend of the running back, right? That, that's on there too. She's the cheerleader. Then you have the person driving the bus. Then you have the coach. Then you may have a chaperone. There may be a couple of parents there that's a chaperone. And then when they get to the town, wherever they're going to, where, where the ultimate story is going to unfold, they may run into um, somebody who lives in that town and he owns a shop and he has a shop and he runs that shop with his eldest son. And so now you have the shop owner. You have the son who runs the shop with the shop owner. You have the bus driver. You have the teacher. You have the chaperone. You have the chili, the girlfriend. You have the quarterback. You have the running back. You have the linebacker. You have everybody on the team. And so now as you're writing the book, you have plenty of people to choose from to die. You can even have four or five people die in rapid, in rapid succession. OK, and you can utilize what I'm telling you guys about drawing the care people, drawing the reader in emotionally. OK, and emotionally attaching them to these individuals by giving their backstories and giving their past and giving their history and their dreams and aspirations and their desires out of life, making them real people and then picking them off one by one. And, you know, boom, taking them through that emotional roller coaster, that emotional roller coaster, that emotional roller coaster. And there are more and the, the reader or the person watching that movie is going to be more invested into the story, right? Whenever I'm telling you, think of, think about what I'm saying. Whenever you watch a movie and the movie starts out with a lot of people, it is because whoever's writing the story knows what I'm telling you now. They just may have never explained it, but they know that somebody has to die. So if there's only one person how can somebody die if there's only one person and that one person has to live at the end? No, you have to build characters just for them to die. You know, you watch you watch you watch Marvel and when, you know, nobody was expecting Thanos to snap his fingers. You know, more uh what which one was it? Uh Infinity War, I believe it was, when Thanos snapped his fingers at the end and half the uni <laughs> Hey, half the universe that's why I was so dynamic. Half the universe died. People that you loved. I don't remember exactly which characters it was, but I believe it was like Spider-Man, Iron Man, uh, Doctor Strange. You know, it was several key characters that you loved died. But there were so many characters you know, they could do it on such a grand scale because there were so many characters that somebody could live on. You could still have main characters dying off and emotionally drawing the, 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 the reader or the movie goer in. But then you still had, you know, somebody like Thor who survived. Right. Who could, you know, carry on, carry on with, with the narrative, with the narrative of the story. 
you see you see what I'm saying? It, it's the same it's the same concept when you're writing a book except instead of the visual effects that come along with the movie, you have to describe the scenes with words and you have to draw people in with your words but the concept is still the same somebody has to die think of the books you've read think of the movies that you've watched think of the tv shows that you see right they utilize this all the time now you as an author you need to understand what they are doing and why so that you can recreate the process in your particular work. Okay, so if you're sitting there and you're thinking that, oh, don't nobody have to die in my book. They, they might not. You know what I'm saying? They might not, you know, because there's millions of different types of books. Millions of, millions of different types of stories that can be written. But for this video, what we're talking about is someone has to die. So I want you to think about all the times you read a book or watched a movie or seen a play and someone died man you can listen you can go back thousands of years and they've understood this one of the oldest books stories in history is something called the epic of gilgamesh from around mesopotamia okay now the epic of gilgamesh was written maybe wow over four thousand years ago man 4,500 years ago, 4,600 years ago, easy, okay, now what happens in the book, right, the hero has a best friend, I don't remember his name right now, I think I remember his name, but I don't want to call out the wrong name and misdirect you guys, but the hero has a best friend who he loves dearly, does everything with, and that friend dies. And it's so emotionally tragic to the hero that it fuels things that he does later on in the book. So you can go back 4,500 years and the writers, the scribes then understood that somebody had to die. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, somebody had to die. You can look at some of the literature that comes out of ancient Kemet, that comes out of ancient Egypt, right? And when they tell you the story of the Netaru, what they call gods, okay, they build up Osar, who you may know as Osiris. His Greek name is Osiris, but his Egyptian name is Osar, okay? And he is a, you know, a wonderful, righteous, loving, kind king of Kemet, king of Egypt. And he does everything right and he takes care of everybody in the kingdom and he goes around the world and he civilizes the whole world, not with the sword, but with his mind, with giving them knowledge, giving them music, right? Giving them culture, giving them agriculture. He gives them things to civilize them. He doesn't kill them to civilize them. And so what happens is this righteous individual he has to die. His brother, Set, kills him. And so when his brother, Set, kills him, that is the fuel for Asar's son, Heru, who you may know as Horus. Horus and Heru are the same person. He grows up to defend his father's name and legacy, and he battles against Set to win the throne back. But even in that, Heru dies and he is resurrected from the dead. Okay, but they utilize the concept of someone has to die. Asar dies and Heru dies. Okay, you can you can look in in in, in Greek in Greek mythology, right? It's the it's the exact same thing. Okay, you think about Hercules. Right. Many of you know about Hercules and how strong he was and the labors of Hercules, where he went and he did like 12 different labors. He went on 12 different adventures and he fought 12 different manners of beasts or obstacles that he had to overcome. 
But if you're not too familiar with Greek literature and Greek mythology, you're not going to understand why this took place. It took place because somebody died. Now, without going too deep into the mythology, because that's not what the book is about. Hercules entire family, his wife and his children were killed. By Hercules. Right. Something happened to his mind. A spell was put on his mind to in a fit of rage. He killed his family, he killed his wife and he killed his children. They had to die. And when he realized what he did, he was, oh, he was so emotionally distraught. And, you know, you get the 12 labors of Hercules. Right. But those writers understood that somebody had to die. OK, they understood that somebody had to die. Even in, even in your belief, if you're a Christian, Jesus had to die. He had to die. And because he died and was resurrected from the dead, you got you. You're taking on that emotional roller coaster. You fall in love with Jesus. OK, you fall in love with Jesus, the son of God. And he does all these miracles and he helps people and he heals the blind. He does these miracles. He walks on water. He he feeds 5,000 people with a few loaves of bread and a few few pieces of fish. Then he gets betrayed and you you the, the reader is drawn in and they're upset. And, oh man, Judas. Oh man, Peter, you left him. What's going on? They nail him to the cross and all oh, the Romans and Pontius Pilate and you you're going through this emotional roller coaster because you see that he's this powerful son of God. He's able to do anything and you fall in love with him. And then he's captured and he brought down to the status of a regular man. And then you're brought low emotionally. Then they hang him up on the cross. And the whole time you're thinking that, oh, maybe Jesus will survive because he's Jesus. But then Jesus dies. And boom, you go down on an emotional roller coaster. You're like, oh, why did Jesus die why didn't why didn't the disciples hell why didn't Pontius Pilate free him why did they release Barabbas why did they ask for Barabbas and not Jesus okay and then they let you he, he's dead for a certain amount of days and his disciples are mourning and Mary Magdalene and the other women there in mourning and they go to the tomb to you know dress his body put ointments and oil on his body right prepare him for burial because he was in the tomb he wasn't buried but then they take you right back up on that emotional roller coaster, and he's he's risen from the dead with all power in his hand. Same concept. You have to utilize these concepts. They have been utilizing these concepts and these tools for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And what I'm trying to do is I'm explaining it to you so that you will know what they are doing, why they are doing, and now you can do it yourself. So when you write a book, understand that someone has to die. OK, and that someone that dies, they have to have some type of emotional connection to the reader. And you do that by giving them a background and making them appear human. And sometimes when you're writing a book, well, all the time, if you understand the concept of someone has to die, you have to put enough characters in the book to where you can kill people off and the book can still go on. And you have to put them on that emotional roller coaster. A lot of times it's good to um have the individual that is going to die prolong the actual debt that make your reader believe that they are going to survive. This will make your book better. Okay. This will make your book better. So go to my website. If you want me to expound on this a little bit more, you can reach out to me. You can, uh, you know, send me a direct message and I will respond to you and we can do some actual one-on-one -on -one coaching, some one-on-one -on -one training and we can get that book wrote and we can get that book uh, published. Right. Um, before I go, go buy my book, Suicide Note. Go buy my book, my sophomore novel, Thicker Than Water. It's set in Texas City, Texas. It's about a gang war that erupts on the streets and the police officers trying to um, stop the war, end the war, find the killers and lock them up. Go get that book. It's a dynamic novel. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the links to those books in the descriptions. And I'm going to put the links to those books in the comments. Okay. Go buy that book, Thicker Than Water. It's changing the game. Go buy Suicide Note. It already has changed the game. There's going to be plenty more coming from Matthew Daniels. So go to my website, www.therealbookworm.com, and reach out to me if you want some training, you want some coaching, you want some personal one-on-one -on -one, um, 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 assistance at writing your book. Just reach out to me. If the video wasn't enough, like I say, reach out to me. If you need help getting the book published, reach out to me. The Real Bookworm Publishing, we can get that done for you. Okay. 
This your brother, Matthew Daniels, a.k.a. Ampo, a.k.a. The Chosen Few, a.k.a. The Real Bookworm. I'm not a bookworm. I'm the real bookworm. Make sure you get it right. And as always, world, may your name live on forever and may your memory never die. Hotel. <laughs>